nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go back in time to the early days of space travel. Could you imagine a spacecraft that could change its own orbit? Almost like a car that could steer itself in space. Now we'll picture the two astronauts are going to boldly take control of that power for the very first time. Today we're diving into the, one of the most revolutionary moments in the space race, Gemini 3. The mission that not only proved our ability to maneuver in orbit, but also set the stage for landing on the moon. Welcome back to Aero Exploration and another installment of This Week in Aviation History. On this episode, we're going to be talking about the Gemini 3 mission a historic flight with astronauts Gus Grissom and John Young, where they would demonstrate that humans can control their spacecraft in the voids of space. On March 23, 1965, the Gemini-3 capsule, nicknamed Molly Brown, launched into orbit from Cape Kennedy. Grissom and Young would prove that they could demonstrate that you could maneuver your spacecraft in flight, as well as paving the way for rendezvous, docking, and the incredible attachments that will come in the Apollo program. So this isn't just a story about one mission. It's about overcoming the unknown and proving with innovation and courage that we could truly reach the stars. And the moon. In the mid-1960s, NASA was in a race against time and technology. Following Project Mercury, the Gemini program was conceived to be a bridge between the gap of low Earth orbit to the eventual lunar landings of Apollo. So in a span of just 20 months, from March 1965 to November 1966, NASA developed, tested, and flew revolutionary capabilities that would redefine human spaceflight. Now, Gemini 3 was the first crew mission in this critical program. It would lift off on March 23, 1965 at 9.24 a.m. from Launch Pad 19 at Cape Kennedy. This was a bold step and a moment the United States dared to push the limits of what was possible. While Gemini 3 was a monumental leap in space technology, it was the people behind it that brought the mission to life. So let's talk about the astronauts. Virgil Gus Grissom was one of NASA's original Mercury 7 astronauts. Born April 3, 1926 in Mitchell, Indiana, Grissom became known for his technical prowess and calm under pressure. He made history on Mercury Redstone 4 piloting Liberty Bell 7, an early space flight that despite a dramatic splashdown, showcased his resourcefulness. Grissom's contributions didn't just stop there. His experience in space helped shape the design and operational procedures of Project Gemini. Sadly, Grissom's life was cut short in the tragic Apollo 1 fire in 1967, but his legacy of courage and innovation continues to inspire. Young made his first space flight on Gemini 3 and then went on to fly a total of six more missions, commanding Apollo 16, during which he walked on the moon. Young would bridge the early days of space flight with the later Apollo era, leaving his mark on NASA's human space exploration program. Together, Grissom and Young not only brought their unique talents to the Gemini program, but their camaraderie and sense of humor, exemplified with the playful nickname of Molly Brown for their Gemini 3 capsule, became a cornerstone of NASA's culture. Their willingness to push boundaries and work together under pressure was essential for the groundbreaking orbital maneuvers we were about to witness on Gemini 3. Now, the Gemini program was the second group of NASA pilots, and these two were about to embark on a mission that would change the course of space exploration. But behind that assignment, there were some challenges and risks. Every maneuver in space was uncharted territory, and every decision could be a matter of life and death. Now, Gemini 3's mission was deceptively simple. Test the maneuverability of the new Gemini spacecraft. Remember how the spacecraft was dubbed the Molly Brown to avoid the disastrous splashdown repeat of Mercury 7's Liberty Bell, which ultimately sunk to the bottom of the ocean under Grissom's command? Grissom decided to name this capsule the Molly Brown, 
after the Broadway musical The Unsinkable Molly Brown. When NASA's management objected to that name, Grissom came back with, how about the Titanic? This quick-witted remark not only diffused the situation, but also showcased the human spirit and humor that would become a hallmark of the Gemini program. The Gemini capsule itself was 18 feet, 5 inches long, and was 10 feet wide, and weighed between 7,100 pounds and 8,500 pounds at launch. Unlike the Mercury predecessors, Gemini 3 was designed to perform orbital maneuvers, an essential capability for future lunar missions. Now, during its three orbits around the Earth, the crew demonstrated that it was possible to change the shape of their orbit, firing thrusters to adjust altitude, shift orbital planes, and even drop to a lower altitude if they needed to. In fact, on March 23, 1965, at the end of the first orbit over Corpus Christi, Texas, a 75-second burn of the orbit, attitude, and maneuvering system altered their orbit, a historic first for crewed spacecraft. But our mission wasn't without hiccups. Early in the flight, the crew noted that there was a gradual yaw to the left. It was a sign of a malfunctioning thruster. It turned out to be just a venting water boiler that was to blame. But even minor issues like this had the potential to compromise their missions. Yet astronauts adapted and maintained calm under pressure. And then there was this little unexpected surprise of some contraband aboard. In the way of a corned beef sandwich that John Young had smuggled aboard. As flight director Deke Slayton later recalled, it was a strictly non-regulation treat that almost turned into a major electrical hazard. Can't imagine the boys left too much there to be caught up in the electronics. Despite these challenges, Gemini 3 proved the spacecraft's capability to perform critical orbital maneuvers, a feat that NASA's engineers had painstakingly developed to ensure the Apollo missions could one day rendezvous in space. But perhaps the most groundbreaking aspect was that it validated the concept that humans could control their spacecraft in dynamic real-world environments, which is a far cry from the static, pre-programmed flights of earlier missions. Gemini 3 was more than just a test flight. It was a turning point. By proving that orbital maneuvers, rendezvous and docking were within reach. It was a bold move to help the United States overcome the Soviets' lead in the space race. Gemini 3 also marked the transition of mission control from Cape Kennedy to the newly established Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston a move that signaled a new era of centralized, highly coordinated spaceflight operations. The experience gained on Gemini, from manual control using a T-shaped handle to operate the first onboard computer, transformed how astronauts interacted with their spacecraft. These innovations are still reflected in modern space missions today. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the pivotal moments of the space race, please hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe to Aero Exploration for more episodes of This Week in Aviation History.